So, uh, you know, my background is both design and engineering, and I'm passionate about the front end especially and have been for a long time. Um, I came from Netflix more recently to PayPal. And so today I just want to talk to you real briefly about my adventure and bringing a whole new technology stack, JavaScript, to really change the way PayPal operates. Because uh, if you haven't been sleeping and you've actually looked at the PayPal site, uh, as I did when I was considering leaving Netflix to go to PayPal, is pretty atrocious, <laughs> to say the least. Very 1999 style. And so uh, I went because I'm sort of partly insane, I think. You know, I just like a challenge. Uh, but I also saw a real glimmer of a hunger to make, make a difference and make a change. <clears throat> so these two titans I'm putting together here are really Node.js, and I'm calling Node.js a titan because Node.js is an amazing piece of technology that changed the way you even think about uh, writing your JavaScript even on the client, but it also is an amazing uh, piece of technology from an API perspective and also from a prototyping and a, and a building application perspective. So at Netflix, you know, a typical Netflix release was something like in 2010 when we launched on the PS3. We actually had four distinct experiences we built over a couple of months, uh, designed and engineered and built. 16 different test cells. Uh, and this was just a typical kind of Netflix release. You know, don't, don't waste time releasing one product or one idea, but release many so that you never miss the chance to learn and if you follow the lean startup kind of thinking, which, you know, I do, and, uh, and as I am pushing lean UX within PayPal, build, measure, learn is the mantra of lean startup. And engineering, in my mind, is really all about enabling learning. And when I was at uh, Netflix, you know, I sort of had an epiphany. And that epiphany, epiphany was just how much I had to engineer for volatility, for change, for learning, and I actually have called the UI layer, the user interface layer, the experimentation layer. It's not just an experience, an exper it's an experiment. And it's an opportunity to actually learn. Now, when I came to PayPal in 2011, complete opposite culture. Totally not invented here. Yes, we have Java Spring. I don't get too excited about that, but they had Java Spring. But it took a 20-day class to learn how to use their version of Java Spring. Very risk averse. Scott Thompson, who had gone to Yahoo, you may have heard of the guy who didn't have the degree, uh, our former president at PayPal, uh, he really turned the knob up on risk, being risk averse. Did some good things in the sense that he stabilized PayPal from a technical perspective, but the experience dial was turned way down and everybody was caught in the net of, you know, your account being frozen or on hold or those sort of things, which creates very, you know, a lot of ill will in the industry. The other thing I saw through a lot of talking to people the first few weeks, month there, was a culture of a long shelf life. And I call it that because it took a long time to get a product up and out the door and a long time to ever take it down, which is uh, why the PayPal experience has languished for a long time. And in fact, you know, this is one of these old experiences here. Uh, that actual phrase there, to change that in 2011 could take as long as six weeks to make a text change on the site. Now, when you have that much, uh, you know, uh, stuff to block you, how do you even learn or experiment? How do you actually make a good product? You can't. So to me, it really explained everything as I got into things. Many, many things. I could write a whole book on the systemic problems that existed throughout PayPal. Uh, technology, though, is one of the key things, a very tangled up technology. No thought really about rapid experimentation or build, measure, learn. Again, all about risk aversion. So let's talk a little bit about the stack that was there and then how, we, how we've gone about refactoring it and making JavaScript be a cornerstone to the changes we're bringing to PayPal. So the existing stack was based on JSP. Actually, there was a little bit of a, uh, before that, about maybe a few months before, maybe six months before, there was this brilliant idea that some folks had there, I, I'm being facetious, to not allow you to actually write an HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, you had, had to write it in Java. You don't get to do closures. Who needs closures? 
You don't get to do cascading. Who needs cascading? You can write it all in Java. Why wouldn't everybody want to do that? A number of actual front-end engineers, some of the good ones left. In fact, I recruited one away from, to Netflix uh, due to that. And when I came back to PayPal, I recruited him back to, to, to PayPal uh, to help me change that. So then I got there. JSP had been you know, brought in, which that, at least that's somewhat sane, but not that exciting. I mean, I was doing that in 1996, 97, and early 2000s. If you wanted to do an Ajax call, no, you know, you don't use jQuery. That's, that's, you know, that'd be too easy, right? You have to subclass a Java controller. And to do any kind of pub sub or any kind of state management, you had to do it all on the server side. So a very, very unfriendly environment for front-end engineers. So just night and day. Fortunately, what happened uh, was after I got there, I brought a few folks over from uh, Netflix and a few other folks in that I'd worked with before, and we started fleshing out a new UI layer, experimenting with uh, JavaScript templating and a few other things that I'll share in just a second. But the real big change was David Marcus had uh, been the head of Zong, which was a mobile payments company, and uh, he, that company got acquired. He'd led the largest company at that point was 150 people. So our CEO of eBay made him the president of PayPal, which was a total change from the past being very risk averse to being somebody who was totally in the lean startup mindset and a serial entrepreneur. So the first thing David did was said uh, was basically walk off the stage when he was announced president and say, let's get a skunk works together and let's reinvent checkout. And so I was pulled into that, that project and that really kicked off our whole effort with using Node.js and also using Dust.js, which is a, a JavaScript templating language. And what we did was, in this project I called Hermes, Hermes is a you know, Greek god. I like the name. I picked it because he's the, Greek, he's the Greek god of mobility. I said he was the first god of mobile. He's the Greek god of agility. We're doing lean UX and lean startup and agile. He's also the Greek god of commerce, and we're reinventing checkout. And then, of course, the brand Hermes, which works really good with that. But the key was we got in a room together and operated like a startup. We followed Lean UX principles. If you're not familiar with that, I recommend Jeff Godhelp's book on Lean UX. We got product design and, and our front-end engineering teams in the same room. We spun up a node stack within the first day or two. We discovered we had GitHub internally uh, purchased by eBay, an, an, an enterprise a license that nobody had told us about. We started using that. We uh, got, a, got, a, like I said, got a node stack up and going, you know, with the ability to generate an application for you, you know, an MVC uh, command line interface. And we started doing sketching on the, we said no more tools, no more, you know, uh, using Azure prototyping tools right now. Instead, let's sketch on the whiteboard and my engineers and us, we will just code this on the fly in real time. And that's what we did. And we started a one week cycle. Every week we went to usability testing uh, we were able to get, you know, feedback on mobile, tablet, desktop, you know, mobile first, uh, using uh, Bootstrap and other technologies to get us going. So from whiteboard to code, from code to usability to learnings and back and start again. And Node was really the center of all that. It really gave us the power. In fact, later, David, our president, when asked by our architectural council, what was the most impressive technologies that he'd seen in PayPal in his first six months? And he said, without hesitation, Node and Dust.js, which I thought was just freaking awesome that JavaScript was called out as the most important technologies in the company. Yeah, you can clap. Go for it. Give JavaScript a hand. <clears throat> so here are the steps we went through to make this happen. And this sounds like I really had a real master plan, but it was really a lot of serendipity. And you take one step at a time, and you come back and tell the story. It sounds a more impressive. But the first step was fire up a prototype stack. So to get those UI bits clean and separate from the server so they didn't have to live in Java or any other kind of back-end language technology, they could live free and be just normal web bits, UI bits, running on top of Node, using all the standard you know, things, all open source. The second was pulling Bootstrap. We did it on the first day, and within a few hours, we had the new look and feel that we had our design team had come up with our new PayPal look, which is much, much better. And we had that going within a few hours with Bootstrap. So we could actually have our first version of the flow, checkout flow, within three days, uh, showing and actually processing payments using Node to, to front some uh, services that weren't JSON-friendly, but making them JSON-friendly. 
This third step was use JavaScript templating. I'm a really big fan of JavaScript templating. In this case, we use Dust. We chose Dust because our, our, our friends over at LinkedIn, another engineering team that we felt a lot of affinity to, I, I knew a lot of the folks over there too, had chosen Dust after a lot of looking at different things. You could choose Handlebars. You could choose a number of different uh, templating languages. We chose to go in with them because we felt they were a good partner. We, we, we work and we're a core committer on the Dust uh, JS uh, link, uh, fork that LinkedIn has. But basically, these, these JavaScript templating languages compile down to JavaScript. So wherever JavaScript can run, you can do your rendering. And that's really powerful, because that makes the UI bits portable. And I could make the UI bits portable to legacy, because now I could actually prototype really fast, but I don't know how to get anything out the door, right? Well, so I had sent an email one weekend, and one of my guys on my team uh, took, took the email pretty literally, and within, uh, by that Monday, by the, by the weekend's over, he had taken Spring and created a new view resolver so that instead of uh, handling JSP, it could handle Dust and run through RhinoScript, RhinoScript being a JavaScript engine for the Java VM. And so we could actually uh, execute the JavaScript templating on our Java stack, on our production stack. So that enabled us to, to create a, a pathway into our production stack and start using and controlling our own destiny on the front end. Still, we would be creating these nodes you know, apps and have to port the logic over the controller orchestration over to the Java stack in Spring or MVC, et cetera. But at least we had the, the, the templates, the UI bits, all portable that could be moved between stacks or could run on the client or the server. So this is the typical checkout, redirect, and then after we have uh, done Node and Lean UX, this is the kind of experiences we're rolling out that are mobile friendly, that are one-click one checkout, Lightbox. You know, we were doing this last uh, April, actually, May, and we're in the process of ramping it up. Of course, you know, ramping up checkout, which is $3.5 billion worth of revenue, takes a little time, so it's not, not as fast as I'd like. We've been done a long time, but it's a matter of ramping now. The fifth step is bringing Node to production. Now, I have a project that I've called Kraken within the company. It's basically, you know, release the Kraken. We have these cool T-shirts with, the, uh, with, the, with the Kraken coming out of the, the node hex. And basically what we've done the last six months is we've hard node for PayPal. And we've made it so that if you come in as a developer on the node stack, you don't really care that the fact that we don't use memcache, we use something called Mayfly. You just use sessions on Connect. It's just normal node programming. So we have all these things, monitoring, logging, security, you know, uh, loca you know locale you know, resolution, rendering, service access, everything like that. And we have a command line interface with our, with our Node uh, framework that we're going to be open, open sourcing that basically we can do a hello world within less than a minute, and, uh, and it gets us up and going really fast. The sixth step is now to one stack to rule them all. So now what we're doing is we're launching our wallet product on both the Java stack and the Node stack in parallel. We'll run those side by side, and then once Node proves itself, we'll start moving everything over to Node. We end up with a single uh, stack. So using all these uh, open source technologies, uh, again, you could pick any number of these, but just getting us to open source was a huge, huge benefit. We use uh, Bower uh, internally, uh, and Bower can you know, redirect out to the, to the other Bower, to the, to the public Bower. But we use Bower so we can do a quick, quick you know, pull all the style sheets, pull all the components in, and do that within a minute or two, you have all the look and feel. We also have an internal NPM registry running internally, which works really well for us. And uh, of course, we use GitHub for our continuous integration and continuous deployment. So you know, I just kind of encourage you that you, know, you can get Node in your own company, too. There's, there's many ways to do it, and many companies have taken different paths. I've talked to you know, the NodeUp guys that do the podcast, Daniel Shaw and others, and I've talked to the, uh, uh, the Node firm and a few others to hear their experiences. And it's very similar to what we've seen. You know, Ben and Dion, uh, when they went to Walmart Labs, they brought Node in and really uses an API server to, to retire old services. And us, you know, we've used it as a rapid prototyping stack to prove it out in the sandbox. But a real key thing is you really have to have talent, you know, and you have to have people who really understand how to write really good JavaScript. We're actually taking folks from the Java side. We have Doug Crockford, you know, who works with me at, at PayPal. And Doug's actually doing training classes for us to, to bootstrap our Java engineers, become JavaScript engineers. So it's pretty exciting times. And I just say that, you know, as we bring new experiences out of PayPal, you know, the real tell will be that we have great experiences. But 
uh, just know that JavaScript is, is power in that transformation, which I think is a pretty exciting story. I thank you very much. Thank <clears throat> you.